Okay, today we are looking at lesson 1.6 in our GOMAC book. So you are going to be um, using pages 37 through, I don't care, I have all these pages, they're kind of mixed up, 37 through 42, okay? So those are the pages that we will be using in our GOMAC materials, okay? So 37 through 42, um, you need to make sure you bring a pencil with you. Um, to our lesson so that you can write things down. Um, the reason why I have you use a pencil is because if you need to erase, okay? Um, so I had to print mine off today um, because my book was missing a few of the pages for some reason. Um, so you'll notice this crazy line down all of the pages. Um, just ignore that and pretend that it's not there, okay? Um, if you need to pause this video and go get your pages or your whiteboard or your pencil, go ahead and do that now. Um, I am going to be using a pen because it's a little bit easier for everybody to see if I use a pen, okay? Um, but I, I prefer that you use a, pen, use a pencil. Um, so we'll be starting on page 37. Um, this is multiply by one digit numbers. So we're, we're kind of shifting gears here. We're not looking at exponents anymore and we're going to be looking at multiplication, okay? So I'm going to just zoom in in a little bit here. So we're at the top of page 37 where it says unlock the problem. We're going to take a look at this together. So it says each day an airline flies nine commercial jets from New York to London, England. Each plane holds 293 passengers. If every seat is taken on all flights, how many passengers fly on the airline from New York to London in one day? Okay. So it says here use place value in regrouping. So um, first of all, it wants us to estimate, okay? So we are going to, when we estimate, we get a number or an answer that's close to what our answer would be, okay? So we have 293 multiplied by 9. So we want to come up with a number that's close to 293, but that would be easy to multiply by 9. So they've actually given us a number here, 300. 293, if we round that up, 300 is a great number to use. Okay, so we're using 300 multiplied by 9. Now, I know that sounds scary, but if you cover the zeros on 300 and you have 3 times 9, you know 3 times 9 is 27, and we add those two zeros that we covered. So our answer should be close to 2700, okay? 2700 should be close to. That does not mean our answer is 2,700 because we estimated first, okay? So now we're actually going to do the multiplication. And they do it step by step where they multiply the ones, the tens, and the hundreds. I don't mind this, but I'm going to show you the, I guess, so to speak, the old-fashioned way to do it. Um, you know, but we are going to walk through this, and on some of our example problems, we'll take a look at um, the other way, okay? So step two says multiply the ones. So we have 9 times 293. So we're going to multiply 9 times 3, which we know is 27. So we, we put the 7 here and carry the 2. Now we're not done. We do 9 times, down here, 9 times 9, which is... 81, but we have to add 2 to that, so that gives us 83. So we put the 3 down here, carry the 8. Then we do 9 times 2, which is 18, plus 8 is, let's see, 26, I guess. Yeah, 26. So we put the 26 down here, okay? So they broke it up based on the 1s, the 10s, and the 100s, okay? Now, in my opinion, I think them breaking it up like that is confusing, okay? So in this blank space over here, I want you to follow along with me. I'm going to do it um, a little bit differently so we can find our answer. Even though we see it here, I, we're going to do it a little bit different, okay? So we have our original problem, which is 293 multiplied by 9, okay? 293 multiplied by 9. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at this 9. This 9 has to be multiplied by all the numbers up here, okay? So 9 times 3, okay? Well, we know 9 times 3 is 27. So we can't just write 27 down here. We're going to write the 7 and carry the 2. 
Okay. Then we have 9 times 9, which is 81. But we can't ignore this little 2 up here. We have to add 2 more to 81. So we have 81, 82, 83. So we put the 3 down here. Carry the 8. Then we do 9 times 2, which is 18, plus 8 more, it's 26. Well now, since we don't have any more numbers that we have to multiply by next to the 2, we can put the 26 down here, and that is our answer. We go over three points in, or three places and put our um, comma. So in one day, 2,637 passengers fly from New York to London. That's a lot of people, definitely a lot of people. All right, let's take a look at, I want to go to page number 39. Okay, 39. So we're skipping page 38 and going to 39. So the top of page 39 looks like this. It says share and show, and it's got this picture of the math board. Okay, so these uh, questions are where we're going to be finding the product, okay? So we're going to be completing and finding the product. The problem is, well, not a problem, but part of the problem is that you are going to be doing some estimating, okay? So throughout this lesson, you'll do some estimating to um, get answers that are close to what your answer should be when you do the actual problem, okay? So let's take a look at number two. I want to start down here. I'm going to scoot this just a little bit. There we go. So we're going to look at number two, okay? So number two says 608 times 8. Now, the first thing we want to do is we want to estimate, okay? So we want to change 608 to a number that's going to be easy to mentally multiply by 8. Now, when I say mentally, that means in your head, okay? All right, so 608. A good number that I would use, because it's easy, is 600. 608 is pretty close to 600. Okay, so go ahead and write 600 next to that. And we're still multiplying by 8. Okay, now the best part about this is we can cover those zeros, pretend they're not there. 6 times 8 is 48. And we're going to write that. Then we're going to add two zeros to that. Okay, and we're going to go over three places and put our comma. Okay, so that's an estimate for our answer. We estimate that our answer is going to be close to 4,800. Now we're going to do the actual math down here, and we're going we're gonna to do the problem, and our answer should be close to 4,800. Okay, all right, let's take a look at this. So we've got 8, and we've got to multiply it by all these numbers up here, okay? One thing, too, that you can do that might help is to draw the lines down. I know your papers are very tiny. To draw those lines down to keep your work nice and even. Um, personally, I don't like to do that just because it is so tiny, okay? All right, so here we go. 8 times 8 is 64. So we put the 4 and we carry the 6 above the 0. Okay, 8 times 0 is 0. Anytime, you, anytime that you uh, multiply a number by 0, it's just 0. So 8 times 0 is 0, but we have to add 6 to that. So we have 0 plus 6, which is just 6. And then 8 times 6 is 48. We have no more numbers to multiply it by, so our 48 just gets to come down here. So our answer is 4,864. Now, we know that's correct because look at our estimate. We're pretty close, right? We're only 64 off from it. So that means that our answer is 4,864, which is close to the estimate that we came up with in the beginning. Um, I want to skip over here to number 4. I'm going to try to zoom in a bit more so you can see it. I hope it doesn't get too blurry. Okay, so number four, we have 1,925 multiplied by seven, okay? Well, the first thing we have to do is our estimate, okay? So we have to come up with a number that we can mentally multiply seven by that will give us a good idea of what our answer should be, 
Okay, so we have 1,925. I would round that right up to 2,000. Okay, and we're still multiplying by 7, and I'm running out of room over there. Sorry about that. We cover our zeros, and we look at 2 times 7, which is 14, and we add the three zeros. We tack those on to the end. So a good estimate for us is 14,000, meaning that our answer should be close to 14,000. Now, at any point, if you have to pause the video and go back and take a look at what we're doing, go ahead and do that. If you have to, you know, rewatch the video at the very end, go ahead and do that. All right, let's take a look at it. 1,925 multiplied by 7. I'm actually going to pull out the whiteboard for this one. And the reason why is because I want to show you um, with the lines how you can keep your work a little bit more organized, okay? So let me grab our whiteboard. Sorry, guys. I'm, like, struggling today with my... I'm going to just zoom out a little bit so we can still see our problem here. We're set. Um, okay, so we're going to take a look at this problem. And I'm going to, the reason why I'm going to do it on the, this one in particular on the whiteboard is because we're dealing with four numbers. And it's also um, going to be a bit easier if we write it a little bit bigger. That's why I always say if you want to use your whiteboard, do it because it will, it'll give you a little bit more room to write, okay? So we have 1,000. 925, okay, and we're multiplying that by 7, okay, so we can write it much bigger on the whiteboard, okay, okay, so what I was saying earlier about drawing the lines to keep our work organized, that just means like this, we just draw our lines straight down, and that'll keep our work kind of organized, um, so you can see what you're doing, okay, so we're going to go through this. This 7 has to be multiplied. I'm going to scoot this over now that we wrote it down. This 7 has to be multiplied by every number up top, okay? So we have 7 times 5, which is 35. So we put our 5 down here, and we carry our 3 above the number next to it. So we put our 3 up there. Then we take 7, and we multiply it by 2. 7 times 2 is 14. But we have to add 3 to that. So we have 14, 15, 16, 17. So we bring our 7 down, carry our 1 up above the 9. Then we take 7 and we multiply it by 9. 7 times 9 is 63. And we add one more, which gives us 64. So we put the 4 down there, carry our 6. And then we take the 7 and we're going to multiply it by 1 and add 6. So we have 7 times 1, which is 7. Anytime we multiply by 1, we're going to get 7, or we're going to get the number. So 7 times 1 is 7, plus 6, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Now, we can write the 13 down below because we don't have any more numbers to multiply that 7 by. Okay, so we, our answer is 13,475 our comma would be long right there, okay? So we're going to scoot back over. 13,475 is pretty close to 14,000. So 13,475, okay? And that's totally fine if you do your work on the whiteboard that was provided to you in your folder. Um, I know that when I'm doing it, it's really hard to do it when it's this tiny and you have to regroup and things like that. Okay, uh, let's take a look at, ooh, I want to take a look at 8 through 11 down here. And I want to start with number 10, okay? So we're going to look at number 10 together, and I'm actually going to use my whiteboard for this as well because, I'm going to erase, um, a great way to erase your whiteboard is just with the tissue... Um, a, a napkin from the kitchen, great way to do that, okay? So we're going to take a look at 8 through 11. I want to start with number 10, um, and the reason why is because um, I want to rewrite it on my whiteboard here. So I've got 6, 
multiplied by 219. And they have it written just like this. Let me scooch it up here. They have it written just like this. Now, I'm going to tell you something. And this is, this is true, true, true. Okay? That's ugly. I do not like to look at my multiplication like that. I like it to be nice and clean and stacked. So if you see multiplication like this, you should stack it. That's the first step. Stack it. Don't try to do this and just, you know, whatever, okay? So let's, let's rewrite this problem, but we're going to do it using the stacking method, okay? And I'm going to use a red pen here. All right, so we have 219 multiplied by 6. We always put our big number on top. So we're going to put our 219 on, ooh, sorry guys, that was not beautiful. 219 on top, and we're multiplying still by 6. See how everything is nice and lined up, everything looks beautiful, okay? All right, we're going to start by doing an estimate, okay? Um, I don't think it says, let me scroll down here on my paper. Oh yeah, it does say to estimate. So it says estimate, then find the product. So we are going to estimate first, then we're going to find the product, which, which the product is just an answer to a multiplication problem. So we want to come up with this big number here, this 219 is kind of ugly. I want to come up with a number that I can do easily in my head if I multiply it by 6. So let's make 219 into 200. Okay. So we have 200. We're still multiplying by 6. It doesn't matter if we stack them or if we write them this way when it's nice and round, it doesn't matter. We cover our zeros. Let's see if I can. Oops, I'll use these markers to cover my zeros. Cover our zeros. 6 times 2 is 12. And we add two zeros, just like so. So our answer should be close to 1,200, okay? Now we're going to do the actual math over here, and we're going to see if we get an answer close to 1,200. And I'm going to use the green marker because it's nice and dark. Okay, so we have to take this 6 and multiply it by all the numbers up top. If you want, and it helps, go ahead and draw those lines, okay? I didn't space out my numbers very good, but you can draw the lines. If you don't want to, you don't have to. Okay, 6 times 9, okay? So we're going to multiply that 6 by all the numbers up top, okay? So let me just make this a little better here. Okay, so 6 times 9 is 54, okay? So we're going to put the 4 down here, and we have to carry the 5 up above the 1. Okay, we have to tack him up above the 1. 6 times 1 is 6, but we have to add 5 more to that number. So we have 6 multiplied by 1, which is 6, plus 5 is 11. Let's put the 1 there, carry the 1 above the 2. 6 times 2 is 12, and we have to add 1 more because of this 1 up here, so that be gives us 13. Okay. Then our comma would go there, 1,314, pretty close to 1,200, okay, iffy, pretty close to 1,200, that is your answer, 1,314. Um, if you do your work on like your whiteboard or a scratch piece of paper, um, just make sure you attach it when you do your homework, okay? So I'm going to scoot this over, I'm going to write my answer where this belongs, 1,314. Oops, and you guys can't see. Okay. Um, on your whiteboard, on your paper, on a scratch paper, something like that, I want you to try number nine. I want you to try number nine, and I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep moving on here, but I want you to pause this video. I want you to try number nine. I want you to do an estimate first, then do a, um, do the actual problem and get your answer, and then unpause the video, come back and see what we got, okay? So I'm going to rewrite it over here on my board, on my whiteboard. We have 338, and we're multiplying it by 4. 338 multiplied by 4. We don't like it when they're like this. 
We don't like it when it's horizontal. I want to stack it vertically. Okay, so I'm going to take my big number first, 338, and I'm multiplying it by my little number, which goes on the bottom, and that's our problem, okay? This is the same thing. They're just written a little bit differently, okay? Let's do our estimate first. Now, you should have paused this video and got an answer on your own and then come back and take a look at this, okay? So 338, we're going to go ahead and round that down to 300. I'm going to write with the green again. Okay, we're still multiplying by 4. Okay, we cover our zeros. 3 times 4 is 12. We add two zeros on. So our answer will be somewhere in the range of 1,200. Now it may be over 1,200, it may be under 1,200, just, you know, we've got to do the math to find that out. Okay, here we go. We're going to do this together. 4 times 8 is 32. So we put our 2 there, carry the 3. 4 times 3 is 12, and we have to add 3 more, so 12, 13, 14, 15. Carry the 1. And 4 times 3 is 12 again, but we're adding one more this time, which gives us 13. We can write the 13 because there's no more numbers to multiply by on this side. We put our comma three spots over. So the answer is 1,352, which is close enough to 1,200. Okay, so your answer is 1,352, and I think this was number 9. Yes. So let's write our answer in. Oops, sorry guys, 1,352. Okay. All right, I want to go to the practice and homework page, which is page number 41. If you need help um, still, and you're still struggling a little bit with doing this, go back and watch this video, okay? Go back and watch this video. Um, work out your problems either on your whiteboard, on your um, scratch paper, if you... If you have enough room and you write small enough and you want to do it here on the page, that's totally fine. Um, just make sure that you, um, if you do it on scratch paper, that you attach it, okay? All right, so I'm going to be giving you your problems for today. You are going to circle these as I give them to you. Um, please pay attention to the uh, directions because they do say to estimate, then find the product. Same with down here for these ones, okay? All right, so I'm going to give you the problems you're going to work through. I want you to circle them as you work, okay? So number two, don't forget to put your name at the top as well. Number two, I want you to do four, uh, five, seven, nine, eleven, and 12. That's a story problem. That one's going to be a little bit different. So on page 41, you're doing 2, 4, 5, 7, 9, 11, and 12. Then on page 42, I want you to do... Oh, I want you to do number 1. And four number one and number four on page 42 okay so again on page 41 you're doing two four five seven nine eleven and twelve that's one two three four five six seven then on page 42 you're doing one and four so that's a total of nine problems okay nine problems for today now the one thing you are gonna do after you do um, your problems on the paper is, oh, the light turned off. Hold on, guys. Sorry. That's so frustrating that it does that. Anyway, okay, so um, after you do your problems on the paper, you're going to go to Google Forms in the math section on our, on our class page, and you are going to fill out the Google Form with your homework answers. Okay, if you don't know how to do that, you need to watch that video. 
This is how you're submitting your math homework to me each day. This is how I know you've done it. Um, if you have any questions, please reach out to me. Have a great day, and I'll see you tomorrow.